Hello and welcome. In this video, we will learn how to use the switch node to make decisions in our flows. We are going to explore two methods for decision making in our flows. The initial method will utilize the basic switch node and will also explore a more advanced switch technique using the function node. In our example, we will develop a number guessing game. We will use the number package in our flow to generate random numbers. If not installed, open the packages dialog, find the package named number, right click and install it. Then to convert a string to a number, we will need the string package. We will begin with an inject node, which we will rename to start as usual. After that, we will add the random node from the number package. Drag and drop the random node into the flow. Let's select a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 10. Check the rounding option to turn the number into a whole number. The output of the random node will be our randomly generated number. Let's call this number. And then now we need to get the guest number from the user, and for that we will use input box. The title, Guess My Number, would be a good choice. For the text message in the dialog, we can use Enter a Number. We can leave the output field name as text. The output of the input box is a string, so we need to convert it into a number. For this, we will use the two number node of the string package. Connect the output from the input box. The input for this node now comes from the input box node, specifically the message text. Choose the message option and enter text. The resulting conversion will serve as our guess. We then need to compare this guess number with the number provided. To do this, we will use a switch node. The switch node is under the programming package. You can either drag and drop or add from the menu by right-clicking. In the switch node, there is one output port, but you can add more by clicking the green button. Each of these ports is capable of executing a JavaScript expression. Therefore, we will utilize these ports to perform a comparison between our number and the guess number. In the first case, let's check if our guess is lower than the actual number. Both values are under the message object, so we can compare them like this. So we have made our first comparison where the guess is less than the number. Our second comparison will check if the values are equal, which will mark the end of our game. The last comparison will determine if the guess is larger than the number. Now we can proceed by adding actions for each of these scenarios. We can start by inserting a message box node after the guess is lower case, which will then proceed as the next node execution for this scenario. Drag and drop the message box node and connect the nodes. Here, the title of the message box should be guess my number and the text should read, my number is larger than your guess. It would be helpful if we could display the guessed value directly in the text to enhance clarity for the user. So to do that, instead of writing a custom string, you can click here and select JavaScript scope. Here, we can write simple JavaScript expressions, which are mostly suitable for one-liner string interpolations to create dynamic strings. Start with the backtick operator, enter the text, and include our guess value. Close it with a backtick. The JavaScript scope allows us to avoid using a function node for simpler one-liner operations. The second case occurs when the user successfully guesses the correct number. In this situation, we will again display the title, Guess My Number. We will also show a congratulatory message saying well done to acknowledge the user's success. After displaying this message, we can end the game with the stop node. The last case involves the guest number being larger than the chosen number. So we will change the message to my number is smaller than the guest number. 
In these cases, we need to allow the user to guess another number to continue the game. And to do that, the flow must continue from the input box. To allow the flow to jump to another location and continue, we can use the go to and label nodes. Let's put a go to node here. And then another go to node here to handle the last scenario. Go to nodes serve the purpose of navigating to different points within the flow. We then need to place a label node before the input box node. We can change its name to next number to enhance the clarity and readability of the flow. After this, we can select this label node from the go to nodes as a target to jump to. With these additions, we are now prepared to run and test our flow. We can start by guessing three. My number is smaller than three. Then let's try one. So it looks like it is two. Yes, we found the number. Let's try this again. Let's start with eight. Hmm, larger than that. Then let's try nine. Yes, we have found the number. The switch node also features another option that we need to mention called break. Although not applicable in this case, in some scenarios, multiple cases may be true. If you don't want the flow to continue branching from these multiple cases, you can select the break option. This ensures the flow will only continue from the first case that is true. And you don't want your flow to continue from multiple ports. If you click break, it will check the statements from top to bottom and stop at the first statement evaluated as true without checking the others. This is also useful for creating a default option for your switch. So if none of the cases are true, although not applicable in this scenario, there may be situations where none of the comparisons hold true, then you will need a default statement for your flow to continue, or else it will throw an exception. To do that, you can add another expression that is always true so that your flow can continue from this port However, with an always true case, multiple options may evaluate as true, which is not what we want. Flow should only continue from the first true case, not the default case, unless all others are false. With this trick, we can create our own default case in our switch node. It will act as we want only if none of the other cases are true, except for the last one, which is always true. Now that we have learned how to incorporate basic decision making into our flows using the switch node, we can continue with a more advanced option. And that is by utilizing the function node and use it for our decision making process. Let's now replace our switch node with a function node. The function node has one output port by default. However, you can increase this number by accessing its properties. You can increase the number of output ports from here. We have selected three outputs for our three cases. Now let's connect the input and the output ports. As we have learned from our previous videos, a function node must always return the message object. However, in our case, we don't have one output port. We have three. In this case, the function node must return an array where the number of elements matches the specified number of outputs in the node properties. The way it works is that you must return a single message object from the desired port, setting all other array elements to null. The elements correspond to the output ports. The first element is associated with the top port, the second with the middle port, and the third with the bottom port. So if we leave the function like this, the flow will continue from the bottom port. The function node is useful because it enables you to write JavaScript code. You can utilize it to perform calculations or execute extra logic. After that, you can run your decision logic using JavaScript's if and else statements. In our case, we need to compare the numbers. So if the guest number is smaller than the target number, we should continue from the top port. So it should be like this. If the guest number is equal to the target number, 
then we should continue from the middle port by only returning the message object from the second element. Finally, let's copy and paste this. If our guess is larger than the target number, then we should continue from the bottom port by returning the message object from the last element. We can now run the updated flow. My number is larger than three. Let's try eight then and no, hmm, five then. Let's try six then, hmm. Now there's no other choice left but seven. In this video, we have learned the basics of decision-making in our flows. We explored two options with the switch node and an advanced switching option using the function node with some JavaScript if and else statements. Thank you for watching.